Hey there, it's Justin. And this one, we are gonna be creating a local web server for a single page application written in JavaScript. In this case, we're gonna be using AngularJS, but this same video can be used for React.js or any other sort of JavaScript library that you might be using. Um, there are other ways to go about doing what we're about to do, but this in particular works really well with AngularJS and URL routing. If you wanna learn more about that, definitely check out our video in the Try AngularJS 1.5 version on joincv.com slash projects. But without further ado, let's actually jump into this. Again, we're gonna be using AngularJS and that's using 1.5. The actual version number shouldn't matter that much because of what Angular does or what any JavaScript library does is it pretty much works in the browser for us. So we actually have to set up a server or a local host on our computer to emulate what it would be like if it was on a live server. We're not setting up a live server, we're just emulating it on our local one. This is really good for all sorts of testing. Now we're actually gonna be following a guide on our GitHub page that is on join CFE dot com slash guides or you could go to joincfe.com slash github and navigate to the guides themselves and we're going to be doing the angular web server with rack guide of course this is a javascript web server so really it could be called a javascript web server guide as well we may change the title but just so you know it's either going to be angular js web server guide or javascript web server guide in the future so what we're gonna be doing here is really just following along with this guide. So in this video, we're gonna be going step-by-step step with this. We will talk about some of the things and the advantages to doing it this method versus another method. Um, and then we will actually show you guys how to actually get a real project up and running. Now, the project that we're gonna be working with is on our Coding for Entrepreneurs and where it's a, an Angular project, just a very basic, simple project so you can go ahead and download and clone or clone this project. Um, there's a good chance that we're not gonna update this a whole lot. It's gonna be pretty static of a project. Um, if we end up using it as a template for all of our future AngularJS projects, then we will definitely update this. But what we're about to do should still work on this in the future. And if it doesn't, please let us know so we can update at least the guide, if not the video as well. Okay, so let's go back into the guide and see what we need to do. First of all, we wanna get Homebrew and Ruby installed on our local computer. There's a good chance if you're working on a Mac or Linux, there's a good chance this is already installed for you. So Homebrew, you might have to go a different direction on how this works. Um, and then once we get Brew installed, we're gonna use the Gems, Ruby Gems. It's a package installer essentially um, to install a package that will allow us to actually have our server emulation happen or our local web server actually happen. But before we jump into this guide, I do wanna mention that there is a way to actually create a web server very simply using Python. So if you have Python installed, you can just do this really quickly. Notice I have Angular web server already downloaded or I have this um, actual project already downloaded. So CFE ng template. We already have that project downloaded and it's right in here. If I um, did go ahead and download it again. I could just click here and then download zip file, unzip it, and then you know navigate to there in my terminal window. I'm not gonna really go through that, but okay, so I'm already in that project. This is this exact same thing that's on our GitHub right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and change into the source file, and I'm just gonna do python-m, and we're gonna do simple HTTP server. Press enter, and now it's serving on port 8000 so we can actually just open up our local host to 8000 um, we could also just type out local host there's a few different urls for local host but it's working right so this is actually an angular angular project that's working uh, of course if i just open the index file for this project nothing shows up but once i have angular working it will actually show that this text right here so this means that angular itself is actually working, uh, which is great, but this is not the best way to do it. In fact, we wanna have something that's set up and a little bit better for using URL routing. That is when we go to like something like about, 
it doesn't give us this error response. This is not what we want to see. Instead, we want to see Angular give us some sort of error um, because again, it's a single page application. We're not going to be covering the routing or actually doing the slash about in this one. Instead, we're just going to be emulating that server. That's the main thing here. So let's go ahead and go through this guide. I'm going to just close out this Python server, the very simple Python server. Again, if you didn't get that command, this is it right here. Um, but let's go ahead and start with Ruby. I'm going to go ahead and copy this right here and paste it in. And what I'll see is that it's already installed. I don't actually need to reinstall it. So if you already have it installed, it's a good chance that you are ready to go. Um, and then we can actually install Ruby itself, brew install Ruby. In this case, I should already have Ruby installed, but if it needs to actually run some installations, that it will. Notice it already updated Homebrew and it did some stuff as well. And then it gave me this last warning that Ruby is already installed. So this means that I can use Ruby gems. So gems allow me to do all sorts of things such as a Python package installer or similar to a Python package installer, uh, but it's just Ruby's version of it. So um, I'm gonna be copying this. If you're on Windows, you don't need to use sudo. You would just do gem um, and to install actual Ruby and all that stuff, you'd go to Windows right there. But let's go ahead and jump here and I'm gonna do install bundler and of course enter my admin password. This is gonna install bundler. What bundler does is it allows us to create what's called a gem file, which then we could just have all of our different requirements for our project. If you've worked in Django or Python uh, before, you will see requirements.txt. Gem file is very similar, but it's related to um, your various Ruby sort of things that you might be using. In this case, we're just using Ruby's rack gem. So rack is the actual way that we're gonna run this server emulation. All right, so let's go ahead and navigate to our project again. I'm gonna navigate one back where the license, the readme and the source folder are. And I'm gonna make a new file in here. So there's a few ways that you can make this file. Of course, if you're on Mac or um, Linux, you could just do nano and then type in gem file and press enter. If you're on Windows, the fastest way I've found it is by using a text editor, something like Sublime Text, and creating a new file and coming in here, saving it and typing out gem file. All right, so that's actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close out the terminal one and just not make any uh, changes or save anything there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and copy what's on here. And I'll explain what's going on here in just a second. And we will just paste this in, save it. So this is a gem file. This is actually um, something that's gonna require, excuse me, this is not the gem file. This is the gem file. Let's go ahead and replace everything there. So this is basically just telling Ruby when we run the next command, hey, use, go ahead and download and install these things. This is where it's coming from and this is what it's called. So let's go ahead and just do bundle install. And this will install it on our local computer. This gives us the ability to work with the different gem files on there. See, as it says right now, two gems are now installed and we can show the bundle that was actually installed or the gem that was installed. That's not the only way you could do it. You could also just run it just like what we did before, which was sudo gem install rack. We could actually run it that way. And that's actually the same exact way um, of doing it. But the, the reason we use the gem file is to monitor all of the requirements for our specific project. In this case, we just needed rack. Just like any requirements um, file would need, the gem file kind of takes place of that. Okay, so now that we have rack installed, we actually want to create our web server um, emulation. So I'm gonna make another file called config.ru and that's for rackup or the rack um, server emulation. So let's go ahead and back into Sublime Text in this case, but your text editor, you're gonna go ahead and open up a new or create a new file. We're gonna save this as config.ru. That's the main configuration folder. This is what this next command is actually gonna look for. Much like when I did bundle install, it actually looks for the gem file, bundle install, that command looks for a gem file in your project. Whereas this next command called rackup will look for the config.ru file. Now, 
you might be wondering why did I choose to put it where I chose. Um, so this is not 100% required. You don't have to put your gym file and your con config.ru file outside of the SRC folder. But the reason I did this is because when we actually jump into our config.ru and paste in the code that we need, go ahead and copy this and paste it in here. A lot of this stuff starts to be a little bit easier to work with. Um, that is, we can set a root folder where our actual website or web application actually exists. So that's what we're doing here. So we actually put this config.ru outside of the SRC folder, essentially to run the SRC folder as our server. And by putting it outside, it allows it to recognize where it is in relation to config.ru. If it was somewhere else, let's say for instance, I had ABC here and I wanted to put my source folder in ABC, that is 100% okay. But then what we need to do is change in here, we would have to do ABC slash and then ABC slash. And just like that, that's how you're gonna wanna do it regardless of what system you're on. So you're gonna run it just like this and that will actually run your server as we are about to do. But I'm gonna keep it as SRC and I'm gonna move my project back in there and I'm gonna delete that folder itself. I'll explain everything else in just a second. Um, but now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run this and by going rack up. And rack up looks for that config.ru. Notice the port where the other port when we were running um, our server with Python, it was 8,000. In this case, it's 9292. So if we go back in here and change this to 9292, we now see that slash about is going to hi there, this is working. I get rid of that about, it's still saying hi there, this is working and all that. So, so now we actually have a server working in the way we want. But then also when I go to static, or excuse me, when I go to JavaScript slash angular.min.js, it actually takes me there. Now, why is it doing that versus how the about is doing this, right? So they're both URLs that are being served by rack. Why are they a little bit different? That has everything to do with this static stuff right here. So when you wanna have a directory or folder being served as a static file that is like an image or JavaScript or CSS or even, or even Angular templates, you could do it just like this. This is how you'd actually serve those files that are in those directories, right? So we have a JavaScript directory. So in here, we have this JS directory right here. Now, if I wanted images, I would just make an images directory. Sometimes you see images as IMG, so you could also do that. And then you would just come in here and change this to IMG or whatever you wanna call it. Um, in this case, I'm not gonna actually add those because we don't want them. Um, but this is now a way to actually serve our file. The next part is we're actually serving the index file and that's what this is doing. It's giving us a status code back, it's giving us some headers, and then it's finally opening up that index file and notice it says read only. Um, so it's actually running that file for us. So now we have it set up where we can start to do URL routing or we could just really just emulate or test our actual local project, which is really good uh, for all sorts of things. But the other thing that should work is when we change any sort of context. So this is just a little bit more, we save that and we refresh in here. It's, it, it actually runs those refresh really, really quickly, which is good because that's actually what we also want to see. Cool. Well, thanks for watching this web server for, with JavaScript video. Um, of course, check out this guide if you have other questions um, regarding to the things that are going on here. Some of the stuff we actually kind of just jumped around and over only because we didn't really want to go into too much depth on some of these other things. Really, it's all about getting this Angular server set up. So now what you're ready for is you learning about Angular routing or just basically learning about Angular in general or allowing you to test any sort of JavaScript framework. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.